This program is sponsored by Maronite College of the Holy Family, Parramatta. Welcome to the program Educating for Success, presented by the staff at Maronite College of the Holy Family. My name is Sister Margaret, the principal of the college, and today our program will be focusing on the importance of religion in education. Our guest speaker for today is Mr. Ron Hasarati, who is the RE coordinator at the college. Welcome, Ron. Thank you, Sister. We'll probably start off with discussing today What's the curriculum for the RE program? What are the subjects we teach? Uh, what are the uh, topics we teach, and so on, from Year Seven to Year Twelve? And then we'll just discuss religion as uh, uh, how young people's approach to religion and how we can encourage them. So, Ron, would you like to please walk us through the curriculum for religious education in the secondary? All right, from Year Seven to Ten, we focus on the Maronite Catholic faith. Year Seven looks at uh, the Bible the foundational stories of the Bible, such as Abraham, Moses, Joseph. We look closely at the Old Testament. Year eight, we oh, focus... With, okay, with year seven, looking at the Old Testament, or we, we call it the Hebrew Scriptures, or the, or the First Testament, how familiar are the students with, with those stories? Well, hopefully from K to 12, they have a basic under... I mean, sorry, from kindergarten to year six, they have a basic understanding of these stories. So they know something yeah, about the Yeah, they've got some idea. Not much, I'd assume. Well, sometimes you think you would like them to have more, but yeah, anyway. I Okay. And when is the New Testament or the Christian scriptures covered? Okay, we look at that in year eight. And how familiar are they with, with that section? Again, they have a basic understanding, but yeah. a lot of the times it is basic. Okay. And it needs to be developed. Okay, so year seven is focusing on the Hebrew scriptures, year eight is focusing on? The Christian scriptures. Okay, yeah. Yep. We look at the parables and life and death of Jesus and his teachings and so on. Yep. Year nine, we broaden out, we look at the sacraments, we look at Mary, we look at uh, closely um, how to understand the Bible, what the Bible is, okay. how it was written, made up of many different books. Which is important today because a lot of people tend to take the Bible too literally. Yes. And all fundamentally and so yes. on, yep or think it's a whole load of rubbish. Yes. Yeah. You've got those two extremes. Mm. Um, so we look at the different genres of the Bible, some of its myths, some of its letters, some of its yep. history, some of its poetry. So that's important for them. And then year 10, we begin to look at issues such as uh, conscience development, moral decision-making. We look at issues such as drugs, bullying, alcohol. Okay, and I think that is then translated into action with social justice group and yeah, so on. Okay. We'll look at that later on, okay. And then year 11 and 12? Well, year 11 and 12, they do the studies of religion, Board of Studies developed course, looks at the five major religions, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Judaism and Christianity. And we focus on two or three of those religions. And it looks at the, the major beliefs and practices and people within those traditions. Okay, so which religions do you choose to teach in, in year 11 and 12? Well, we do Christianity, obviously. Yep. And the good thing about that is they get to write about Christianity in the HSE. Mm. So the course has an intellectual rigour to it. Okay. And the students tend to respect it more because it's something that they get examined in their HSE. Okay. All right. And um, yeah. then we look at um, Judaism and Islam. Okay. And also Hinduism, I've just started. All right. What's Hinduism. their response when you teach them another religion? Uh, generally, they're interested in it. They find mm. it interesting. Okay. Um, Hinduism, because we live in an area that has a very high Hindu population, mm. they're interested in Islam because of their um, cultural background from the Middle East. Yep. So they always hear a lot about it. Mm. So they're always um, interested to find out more about it. Judaism, they sort of they seem a bit ho hum about. Mm -hmm. but yep. Christianity, mm. we look at it um, mm. in more depth. Okay. Why would they be so ho-hum, not really excited about Judaism? I think it's because they don't come across it 
or that connect. much um, yeah. in their lives. Mm. Whereas Islam they do, mm. and mm. Hinduism they do because of the area they live in. Okay. Now, as, as you know, religion is a contentious issue. Uh, what's the benefits of teaching about other religions for our students or for any student in general? Well, I think one of the main benefits is they live in Sydney, which is one of the, I think, most multicultural um, city in the world. Yes. So when they leave school or you know, when they're mixing with other people outside of school, they meet Hindus, they meet Muslims, they'll meet people of other religions. So mm. um, it always helps for you to get on with somebody if you understand their faith. Yeah, and I suppose it breaks down all these um, stereotypes and, and yes. yeah, mis misinformation about particular religions. Okay, let's go back to the start. Why do we even teach religion in a school? I mean, private schools, Catholic schools generally will teach religion, public schools not necessarily. So why is it such a big thing at this college and generally in Catholic schools? Mm, big question. <laughs> The main reason is because I need to be employed. <laughs> if you teach well, yeah. yeah. Um, why do we teach religion yeah. in school? Mm. Well, I mean, I would say that religion is part of being a human being. Yeah. Uh, you can't be a full, fully alive human being unless you have some sort of connection with God. So that's part of the Catholic ethos. We see the human being as created to be in a relationship with God. So. At school, we try to develop that relationship and inform it. Okay. Obviously, it's got to start in the home. Yes. And we try to build on that faith that they receive in their homes, and we try to build on it in the school. Okay. Um, I know our parents, some parents are quite religious, and they choose this college in particular because it is a Maronite Catholic college. So they see religion as being important in educating the, in educating the students here. Uh, Okay, we're not just Catholic, we're Maronite Catholic. So how do we teach the Maronite faith in particular at this college? Well, obviously we do the Maronite history. We look at St. Maroon and the development of the Maronite Church. Very much part of the college life is going to Mass in the sacraments. Okay, so we celebrate the Maronite liturgy yeah, at this so, school. I mean, the school is uh, very closely connected with the church and with the families, and it's all one big Maronite community. So. And we celebrate the Maronite liturgy. We um, we have reflection days and retreat days where we look at you know, issues of Maronite spirituality. Okay. Yeah. And don't forget the history of the Maronite sisters. Oh, that's right. Yes, very much. So. <laughs> that's taught to the students as well. Okay. We'll move on um, away from the curriculum, which is taught in all schools anyway. Um, we uh, just maybe you want to mention the textbook we follow, or for year seven to ten. I think we focus on. No love and worship, is it? Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's just talk about religion in general and, and young people's attitude to religion. Uh, in okay. Australia, it's a very secular society. Unfortunately, you know, religion is always a, a contentious issue and looked upon negatively in the media. So how can we uh, develop in our students a positive image of it? Firstly, what, generally speaking, how do you find... Uh, young people's attitude to religion, not just at our school, but young people in general? Hmm. Well, as you said, we live in a very secular society. Now, the basic assumption of a secular society is that you can be happy without God. You can be happy if you have enough money, if you have enough uh, possessions or pleasures or experiences. Um, that's the basic assumption of a secular society. Now. St. Augustine said that God created us for himself and our heart That's will always sense. be restless until we have a relationship with God. So what we've got to try to um, teach young people is that it's a lie to think that they're going to find happiness in money or possessions, that they need that connection with God, they need that spiritual connection to reach their fulfilment, to reach the fullness of life. Mm. Now, unfortunately, uh, in the past, it was the parents and the family environment that raised their children up in the faith. And then there was the church. They used to go to church on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Today's trend is pretty much most young Australians are raised up in a family that does not mention religion. They don't go to mass on Sundays. In fact, they've probably never been into a church. So the first church today is no longer the family or the church. The first church today or their first encounter with Jesus is in a school. 
Mm. So I think the school now has a much, much bigger role to play uh, in religion, not just teaching the curriculum, which we talked about earlier. I think it's actual formation of the child in, in Christ and introducing them to Christ. So it's gone back to basics, really, hasn't it? Uh -huh. mm? yeah. So we might have to really look at the curriculum and how we teach it because what we used to assume in the past, young people know, today we can't assume that anymore. Yeah, we um, just on that, one of the things we introduced at the school was meditation, was to um, open the students up, hopefully, to an experience of God, an experience of Jesus within themselves. Um, and how did that go? Well, the, the students enjoy it. They like the opportunity just to be quiet. Mm. And which is important. Sort of focus, mm. which they very rarely get that opportunity. They're always plugged into something these days. Um, so they enjoy it, but like anything, after a while they tend to roll their eyes at it. And so, you know, but, but it's there. It's... Okay. Talking about meditation, so let's move a bit away from the curriculum then and, and written word to more the practical ways we can implement religion in the school. So you've mentioned meditation. Are there any other ways we've, we've actually, you know, made religion practical? practical or accessible to our students? Mm. Well, the school's always had a strong um, tradition of social justice. We've always been involved. We've always had the students to, um, we always encourage the students to go out into the wider community and to help like uh, blood donations. At the moment, we're running the um, St. Vincent de Paul Winter Appeal. Yep. We have the Year 10 Social Justice Group, which visits Westmead Children's okay. Hospital. There's so actually there is that outreach yeah, program. There is a lot of outreach and I, I would like to talk about that in depth um, later on. We're just going to take a break now and we'll be back and continue on about the practical dimensions of religion in education. Thank you. This program is sponsored by Maronite College of the Holy Family, Parramatta. What do you do if your child has too much homework? To make the learning for the students better, more engaging. What do you do if your child does not have homework? And we put the children as per their ability. Do you prefer the traditional methods of teaching? Here we've got um, interactive whiteboards in all of as the well. classrooms. Yep. If you want answers to these questions, watch our program Educating for Success with Sister Margaret Lawson, the Principal of Maronite College of the Holy Family Parramatta on Midpoint TV. Welcome back to our program, Educating for Success. Our topic today is about religion and the importance of it in an education scenario, particularly for young people today who are distancing themselves from religion. Mr. Hazarati is our guest speaker today and he's been talking to us about the curriculum. What we want to really get into now is the practical side of religion, so hands-on approach. Ron, you were talking about in year 10, you've established a social justice group, and that's been going now for about eight years, I think, or longer even. Can you ask, tell us why you established that group and what are the things they do and who participates in it and so on? Well, the main reason why is because I believe strongly that Christianity is about helping others, about reaching out to others. So we wanted to give the students at the school an opportunity to put their faith into action. Okay. So we would visit local um, groups, local institutions. One of the things, as I mentioned before, we visit Westmead Children's Hospital. Okay. Before we go into that, which group actually, is it volunteers or do you pick who they are? Well, it's a Year 10 Social year Justice 10. group. We yep. ask for volunteers. And, and do you generally get a few? Oh, we, we get a lot. Okay. The kids are very keen. In fact, I can honestly say that I see the best of our students when I take them. I'm okay. very proud of their generosity, their enthusiasm, they're okay. just great. Well, can you give us some examples of what you've seen? Well, one of the things we do, we go to Westmead's Children's Hospital and the staff there are always very impressed with our students because of the way they dress up, they really get involved. 
they dress up in costumes and um, they buy little gifts for the for the patients and you know they're they're very friendly they're very outgoing and they really enjoy what they're doing and the staff always loves to have us back. Great. Other things we do yeah. we visit the um, aged care facility the local aged care facility and. I mean, just to see the way the students interact with the elderly is just, just fantastic. It it's comes great. naturally to them, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> They're so very social. <laughs> Any other things that they do as a social justice group? They do quite a few things. We do, um, uh, we donate blood regularly. Uh, we have the St. Vincent de Paul winter appeal and Christmas, Christmas appeal. At Christmas we, we uh, collect hampers, we make hampers. And, I think that's a very big thing at the yeah. college. Um, last year we had, I think, in excess of 150 hampers, which was so unexpected by St Vinnie's. They didn't even know what to do with all the hampers, yeah. I think, at that yeah. point. Yeah, it's great to encourage young people. And I think it all comes back from Matthew chapter 25, the last judgment, yeah. Yeah. You know, what you right. did to the least of my brothers and sisters, you did to me, as yeah. Jesus said. Um, another big thing I think is during Lent, what do you t how do you put religion into practice during Lent? Okay, we have the Project Compassion, so we have a few f fundraisers to raise money for Caritas and Project Compassion, that's always a big part of Lent. Okay, I know in primary they also have, Year 6 have uh, rice dis dishes, so just to um, see how the, the poorer people live off one rice dish a day. So these six has exchanged their usual lunchtime food, which is quite a lot of food, and just live off one bowl of rice. And I think it's an eye-opening experience for them. Yeah. So, yeah, so these are some of the ways we put religion into practice and make our young people, you know, be drawn once again into the ministry of Christ. So let's then go back. We're still focusing on a practical side. How about the masses? Do we... What do we do with our masses um, at a celebration? Well, we have mass regularly at the school. Students always involved in the liturgy, the choir. Um, at Christmas, we'll, we'll put on a big drama performance and, and Easter as well. Um, and it's just the general students participating in, in the mass, the singing, the prayers. Yep. They love to serve at mass. Mm. I think what's good also is we see a lot of parents attending those masses yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's a, it creates a community, family environment. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's move back again to religion just in general. Um, we do fantastic things at the school, and I think the practical and the knowledgeable side, you know, shapes our students. However, the fact is a lot of young people are turning away from the church. Can you give any reasons why young people are disillusioned with the church? One of the strong points about the Maronite church is that the young people there um, at the youth masses, they're full. Okay, why is that compared to other masses and other churches? I think we have the um, cultural heritage that keeps them together. They want to go somewhere where they can meet other um, young Maronites. Okay, yep. Um, I mean, you'd probably know more about this than me. Yeah, probably what do. What do you think? <laughs> you want me to answer the question? Yeah, why not? Um, why, well, there's two questions here. Why are young people drifting away and why are, is our Maronite? Uh, youth still quite attached and I think you're, you're, you're right there by saying it's a, a cultural thing. They are, are raised up in a family environment that's very religious and in, a lot of studies have shown young people who, who have the faith and keep the faith, it's because they've had either a mother or father who've been quite religious at home So, and, and that's the case with most of our young people. So it starts back home at, in the families. A lot of those who have drifted away generally aren't the Maronites other young Australian youth and the fact is as you said the families no longer mention Jesus at home there's no religious feeling at home you don't even see a crucifix or, or any religious art up. so they're not, they're not familiar with it so they kind of drift away other reasons why young people are drifting away as you said we're in an affluent society in Australia so they think they've got money they've got you know they go on holidays they have what they think is necessary and important so there's no place for God. Unfortunately, probably the third reason why young people are drifting away from the church is bad media coverage. Uh, and a lot of the, well, issues that have arisen from the church. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the pedophilia issues which won't go away um, and shouldn't go away until we deal with them properly. Um, uh, there were surveys done of why young people don't go to church and main reasons, it's boring. 
they find it irrelevant um, and just add a touch with who they are. Mm. Uh, but we can't dwell on the negatives. What are the positives or how are the, what are the ways we can bring young people back, not necessarily into a church or into a Sunday mass, but how can we bring them back to Christ? Because I think we've, we've kind of come to a stage where we've moved away from institutionalisation of a religion. Mm. I, think, I think now we're talking more about spirituality. As you said, with the social justice group, that's, more, that's very popular because it's more of a practical thing for them. It's more, you know, you see the actual real side of religion, which is giving and helping those in need. So I think we really need to focus on the spiritual dimension, the mystical dimension and the service. Mm -hmm. And our college is to know, love and serve. And that serve comes from Jesus serving others. So I think that's the way you probably can draw young people back mm -hmm. to Christ. But yeah. do you have any other ideas how we can, you know, invite young people back into, yeah. into the church or show an interest once again in, mm -hmm. in Jesus? Well, I was listening to Father Barron the other day, and he was saying, if you want to get a young person interested in baseball, mm. you don't start off by telling him the rules of baseball. <laughs> That's right. Okay? You, you take like him that. to a baseball game, mm. you, he watches it, he'll fall in love with it. Or and she. Then, mm. Or she, that's right. And then <laughs> later on, you tell them the rules and how to play yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah, but I don't think baseball is probably the best example here. Well, basically, you <laughs> we were saying, if you, want to, if you want to get a young person that's interested right. in Catholicism, yes. you don't start with off the, with the rules. Yeah. You start off with the beauty of Catholicism, mm. the great art, the great cathedrals, the great yeah. um, the music and so on. Mm. Um, what yeah. you were talking about before, the, the relevance of it, how it's about serving others, how it's about making society a better place, yeah. the spiritual tradition within Catholicism, you start off with, with those good points. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Pope at the moment is talking about the joy of the gospel. We've got to present the gospel in a way that's joyful, uh, present that's the merciful right. face yeah. of Christ, not that's the right. overly dogmatic, legalistic mm. side of things, which doesn't attract young no, people. No, no. Um, talking about Pope Francis, which you just raised, I think he's been a very positive influence for Christianity, uh, not just Catholics, Christianity in general. How do you find our students respond to this new Pope? Well, that they like him. They mightn't be able to articulate why they like him, but they like him. Because as you said, he, um, his image, the image he presents on the media is a very positive image. I mean, at the moment, students have new atheism on the one hand, which says all religion is rubbish. Mm. Then you've got the extreme fanatics mm. on the other hand, which... You can understand why the atheists are saying all religion is rubbish. Mm. So the Pope is presenting a very mm. positive image of what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be religious. Yeah, and he's not focusing on, you know, the institutionalised form or so, on clerical form. His is very much hands-on approach and, and, right. and with the people, the everyday yes. people, you know, yes. jumping out of his Pope mobile yeah. to shake hands with people. It's, it's what they want to yeah. see. Well, what did he say? The church should be like a um, medic in a battlefield. Yeah. Mm. Uh, now, going back just one step, you did mention um, fundamentalists. Do you want to explain exactly what that is? And we do see it in young people. Uh, unfortunately, we see a rise, and not just in Christianity, we're seeing it in Islam and a few other religions. So can you explain to the audience what are we talking about when we talk about you know, these fundamentalists? Well, uh, a fundamentalist to me is someone who puts God in a box and says, God is here and is nowhere outside of that box. And anything outside of that box is evil and is bad. Okay. So, um, so you know, intolerance of other It's religions. very intolerant, mm. very black and white. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, and unfortunately, I think that's the response we have of young people today because of what they're seeing. Mm. Our role as educators at Maronite College of the Holy Family and as any, the role of any educator when we teach religion is to give this um, freeing image of God that with ultimately the message of love, peace, joy, acceptance, which is what we're doing in our classes. And I think that's why religion becomes a necessity in all, all classrooms because it allows young people to really flourish and to learn how to serve and to be a, develop a, a conscience of what is happening out there and to be able to make the right decisions for the benefit of all society. Thank you, Ron. For, for coming to this episode and speaking well about you know religion and, and what we do at the college. And, and I suppose we end off this program 
tied toward educating for success and our focus today was on religion and the importance of educating our young people in the faith. Thank you.